Tonight, we are believing that God is going to visit us in a very powerful way. And I also want to seize the opportunity to thank our national head, also Ebenezer Ni Odakwe and Mama Rosie, uh, who has been a tremendous help. And I've planned all these things for us to be able to bring the word of God. We are so grateful. We appreciate you so much. Say, Daddy and Mommy, may the Lord richly bless you. Amen. To our area heads, may God richly bless you. Amen. We are speaking on the team. Who is this King of Glory? Who is this King of Glory? And I believe there has been a lot of, of preachers who have gone ahead of me, have gone ahead of me and have you know spoken on the word so powerfully but tonight we want to uh go into the word of god and also take it to another level i believe that god will bless you and god will show himself strong unto you the lord will perfect that which concerns you uh, can i hear somebody say amen amen, amen. We want to take our scripture reading from psalm 24 from verse 1 to the end. Psalm 24, verse 1 to the end. Then the earth is the Lord, and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has a clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitly, he shall receive blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, son? Lift up your hands, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your hands, O you gates. Lift up your Lift up you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Somebody shout, Amen. I, I thank God tonight that we are able to come your way through this video. And I pray that the Lord will bless you as you sit back to listen to the word of God. I want you to understand that we are serving a God who is all powerful. The Lord who we serve is a powerful God. He is an omnipotent God. He bewails all power. All authority belongs to him. He is an omniscient God. In other words, he knows all things. He knows what is hidden. He knows what will happen tomorrow. He, he, he knows everything. He's an omniscient God. The word is omni God. Omni science God. Nothing is hidden from him. He knows all things. We serve an omnipresent God. In other words, God is everywhere. He dwells in every situation. He dwells in every situation. He's an immutable God. He's an immutable God. In other words, he doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He will continue to be who he is. The Bible says that God, in all his power, in all his own knowing, in his omnipresence and immutability, God spoke out of the darkness and he said, Light. And light came into existence. God spoke himself into existence. And then he created all things. He created the sun, 
He created the moon God, created the stars. In the book of John, John said, when I lifted up my hands, I could see the sun, I could see the moon, I could see the great stars, the lights of the Orion, the planets, the atoms, the majority, all things are created by this powerful God. He created it for his own glory. And so when the Bible says that the earth and all that dwells in him belongs to our God, David was right. The Lord is the creator of all things. I love it the way scripture puts it. In the book of Colossians, he says he is the image of the invisible God, the first God of all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominion or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things consist. He is the head of the body that catch who is the beginning, the first one from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence, for it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. And so God created all things. Indeed, the Bible said that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, for he has founded it upon the seas and upon the water. God is the creator of all things, and all things belong to him. In fact, he is the sustainer of all things. Amen. So somebody shout and amen. 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 Praise our Lord. But after God has created all these things, something very important was started. So the Bible said that God took the earth and created something in his own image. Created something in his own image. And that thing looks like God. But God did something. He breathed into that earth the breath of sowing, the breath of life. God gave it. He gave life to man, resuscitation, and man became a living nothing. He became aware of himself. Suddenly, the Lord God, who is hidden in eternity, has condescended to become man. Man has come. God has come to live in man. And the Bible said that God said, The one who I have created has become like unto one of us. I believe that we have become like God the Father. Because we have his image, we have become like God the Son, because we are in his likeness, we have become like God the Holy Spirit, because he gave us his spirit. Oh, hallelujah. And God said, subdue the earth, rule over the earth, everything belongs to you. Have dominion over all things. You see, from the very outset of creation, it has always been the intention of God that he will indwell man. God wants to dwell in us. That is why the scripture says, we have this glory in ancient verses, that the excellency will not be of us, but it will be of God. I love it the way Paul says it. He says that, a good foundation have I laid, and no man laid another upon it. Everyone has got to be very careful the way he builds upon the true foundation. If you build with gold, if you build with silver, if you build with straw or bronze, whatever you build upon shall be tested with fire. Don't you know that you are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you? That Holy Spirit is the third personality of the gospel. And so God is always of the intention to dwell in man. The prophetic word by the prophet Jeremiah says, a day shall come, a time is coming that the Lord is going to make a new covenant with his people and his spirit will dwell in man that no one will need to teach the other but each one will know God for himself. In the last days he will pour his spirit according to Joel that the spirit of the Lord will come upon man and our old women will drink dreams but the young men will see visions and begin to prophesy. Of those visions. Life was good when God created man. God had such a good fellowship with man. And, and God would come into the garden at the cool of the day to have fellowship with man. But here comes someone by name Satan. The Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. 
He is an accuser. He doesn't want the good of men. The Bible says that this is the one who stood in the presence of God and had no business but had to accuse Brother Job. He accused Job to the degree and to the extent that the Bible says in a single day, Job lost virtually everything. He lost his children, he lost his estate, he lost everything that he had suffered so much for. And, and yet the enemy was not satisfied. He stood up in the presence of God again and accused Job. And the Bible said that he attacked him with disease from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Job was infested with sickness. When friends even came to visit him, they could not recognize their own friend. He is the accuser of the brethren. I am talking about the one who said, I will exalt my throne above God. I will be God myself and demand worship. And the Bible said, because of his pride, he was cast out of heaven. I am talking about the one the Bible says that he will stand in the temple, the son of petition, and demand that all should worship him. I am talking about the one who officials call the prince of the earth. He, he, he rules in, in territor territories in the earth. He, he commands a lot of power. But thank God, thank God, we have someone, we have someone, we have someone. He is powerful and he has won the victory of what he's about to do. I would say that even though this accuser of the brethren succeeded in deceiving man in the garden. A man lost his place. He lost his power. He lost his glory. But God had a plan. And so the scripture says that God took a lamb and killed the lamb and covered the nakedness of man. This is what we call pro evangelium. God was announcing that in the future, he knows how to redeem men. He knows how to cover the sins of men. He knows how to redeem man back unto himself. But the enemy, the enemy did not know. And then God said, I have placed an enmity between you, the seed of the woman, and the seed of the serpent. And so war was declared even at that time. From the very onset, there is war between the seed of the woman the seed of the serpent. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And so whosoever sin shall die. Do you not know that by the sins of one person, the sins of Adam, all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. Oh, 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 my God. God is so powerful. God is so infinite. God is, is immutable. God knows exactly what he's doing. And so in the fullness of time, the serpent had to bruise the heel of the sin of the woman. And so the Bible said that Jesus came and he was, he was lifted up on the cross. But the Bible said that even on the cross, he bore our sins. He carried our souls. He was stricken and smitten and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement that brought us peace was laid upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. Oh, can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Jesus died a painful death, but he did it for a reason. He did it because of your sins. He did it because of your souls. He did it that you might receive peace. He did it that even in the midst of this corona, what can put in his confidence and faith in the Lord and say that if Christ be for me, who can be against me? And by his stripes, we shall heal. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, as a result of the death of Christ, the believer is saved. We have received eternal life. So the Bible said that if any man is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. The Lord is come. Behold, the new has come. In Christ Jesus, we have received a better covenant. 
We have a better covenant. And let us speak better things than that of Abel. And we have a glorious hope. A glorious hope that one day Christ will come. And when he comes, we will not be as this. We shall receive glorified bodies. The Bible says that those who are dead will rise up first. And those who are living will be changed in the twinkle of an eye. And we will go back to meet the Lord. And there shall we be. It is very important, or much more to point out that when Christ, after three days, resurrected in glory and power, he did not come alone. But the Bible said he took captivity captive. In other words, those who had died from the day of Adam till the day Jesus was buried, he took them all captive. Because the scripture said he went and preached about himself, even in Hades, that those who believe might also receive eternal life. The Bible said he took captivity captive, and he ascended on high with them. And after that, he gave gifts unto men. Some have been called to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfection of the saints. The Bible said that when Jesus was resurrected, According to Matthew chapter 27, 50 to 57, Jesus did not resurrect alone, but he came with the dead, and they went into the city in Jerusalem and showed themselves to people that today we are redeemed. Today we are saved. Today Christ has come to redeem us from the hands of the enemy. And that is why I am here to tell you that during this Easter, during this festive, you are not under the bondage of the enemy. Christ has died to pray for your sins. You are not a sinner if you know this. And he has redeemed you from the hands of the enemy. May you receive your freedom in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Beloved, we are not under bondage. We are not under the dominion of the enemy. Yes. Christ has washed us by the washing of the blood. And so when we believe in him, when we believe in him, we are more than conquerors. Mm. Somebody say amen. amen. There is something that I want you to understand. That even this was prophesied long ago mm. by the prophet Daniel. Mm. In the book of Daniel, the Bible says that the king had a dream, he could not understand it. And that Daniel had to be called to interpret the dream to the king, Nebuchadnezzar at the time. He dreamt of a huge figure. And then for no way, a stone was cast. And the stone hit that statue. And it was crushed from the feet. And the, it, it crumbled on the ground. Jesus is the stone of stumbling. He is the stone rejected by men and has become the capstone of the building. He came to his own, his own did not receive him. But today I am here to announce to everybody at the sound of my voice that those who believe in him, those who accept him, he has given them power to become the sons of the living God. In this convention, you are going as the son of the living God. The power of God will reach out to you. You will become a safe person. You will receive eternal life. And when you pass out from this world, you know that you have a future. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. The question is, if Jesus is not with us today, is he the king of glory? Yes, he is. The Bible said that before he went, he gave us some promises. He said, I am going to prepare a place for you. And after I am done, I will come for you. And where I am, you will also be. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. Mm. I am the life. No man goes to the Father mm. except by me. Mm. Do you know that angels mm. also testify of his coming? The Bible says, Angel says to the disciple, This same Jesus you see today ascending into the heavens. 
will one day also descend, and you will see him with your eyes the same way he is being taken to heaven. The Apostle Peter also wrote Second Peter chapter three and verse ten. He said, "The day of the Lord shall come like a thief." I want you to understand that Jesus is coming back again. Amen. Jesus will not tell you. Pretty soon, one of these days, he will show up. The scripture says the coming of the Lord is what in theology we say apocalypsis. You know, he he died and turned the curtain into two. And so now we know what is behind. My Lord is coming again. He is coming again. He has unveiled and revealed mysteries hidden behind. That is why we are confident. That is why we are not ignorant. Ignorant because we know what is coming. We know that our God is coming again. We know that He will surely show up. He is the King of glory. He is the King of glory. Amen. You see, the coming of the Lord is what to stir Perusia. Perusia means the coming of the Lord, but it has been divided into two phases. One is the rapture of the Lord. Yes. You see, what we are seeing in this world attests to the fact that pretty soon Christ will come. And if you should show up today, what will be your state? Yeah. The Bible says that he himself shall be sent with a shout mm. of an angel. Yeah. That death will rise up first. Yes. Those who are living will be changed in a twinkle of an eye. Yes. And we will meet the Lord in the head. Mm. And he will take us to heaven. Mm. Where we will go and spend some time with the Father. Oh, the marriage supper of the Lord. Mm. I wish to be there that day. Yeah. But beloved in Christ, it can happen even once I'm preaching to you right now. Yes. The King of Glory mm. will be coming. Yes. Yeah. That is rapture. As you walk through the streets, there are no cars. There are no people. That day will be a mystery. It is one of the hidden things in the Bible that normally we don't preach about. But I tell you, Jesus is coming. Amen. I tell you, Jesus is coming. Amen. The King of glory is coming. Amen. You better get ready because any time sooner, he will appear. Yes. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then, when we talk about Perusia, we are talking about the rapture. But the second one is what brings our team. It's the appearance. It is the physical descent of Christ on planet Earth. Mm. But ladies and gentlemen, Jesus will not come until the rapture. Yeah. I believe in the pre pre trip theology. That is why I'm saying you better get ready because we can be raptured at any point. But after that will be the tribulation. To be the severe period that will be so difficult. In this world, in this seven year period, it will be divided into two, and the scripture makes it very clear that it will be such a horrific, horrific, and horrendous plague on planet Earth. Let me give you some things for you to understand what I'm talking about. The scripture tells us in Revelation chapter 6 there will be wars, there will be hunger. There will be death. And we have seen it happen. The Bible speaks about the trumpets, the falling of stars, galaxies, destruction of water bodies, intense darkness. Beloved, there are things happening. And all these are signs and pointers that pretty soon the King of Glory is coming. Oh, I will get to the message. I know what I'm doing. We have the most. The most are diseases. Mm. The, the voice and vows of those with the mark of the beast during that tribulation. No wonder we are dealing with Corona. We are not in that tribulation yet, but it is a sign to the world and the generation in which we live. Now, pretty soon, the white wing is coming. The king of glory, the ruler of this earth, is coming again. It will be a period where Satan himself 
will be at the center of evil. The Antichrist will be a political leader with one world region and one economy. We have someone we call the prop, the false prophet, a spiritual leader to paint the Antichrist with signs and wonders. The Bible said that in the midst of all this, the gospel cannot be hidden because it is the desire of the Father that all of us will be saved. Yeah. And so God will appoint about 144,000 Jewish evangelists who will go and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations. Yeah. Listen, today is an opportunity for you. Because there is a shutdown but you still have the opportunity today to listen to the word of God through this media. There shall be a day where there will not be an opportunity for you to hear the word of the Lord. That is why scripture says the day you hear the word of the Lord, do not have to act. I bring to you the gospel of the King of glory. The acceptable time to repent is now. The Bible says that in that period, God will raise two witnesses. Who will operate in the spirit of Elijah? Some say Moses, some say Enoch. I will go for Moses because when you look at the miracles they will perform in those days, they can be alive with that of the miracles that happened in Egypt. They can shut the heavens, they will speak, and darkness will come. The Bible says that the Antichrist will kill them. Three days they will leave their bodies outside to rot, and the world will rejoice. But you see, this is what my mother will say. I feel like preaching. The reason why I believe that our God is coming and is is the King of Glory is the fact that after three days, when they thought these guys were going to walk, the power of God shall descend and enter into their body, and this one shall rest. And God will lift them in the eyes of all humanity into the heavens. It is a sign that our God lives, the King of glory leader, and is coming for the sakes. Are you part of them? Will you be part of them? Around all these tribulations, the Holy Spirit and angels will be ministering behind the scenes. Ladies and gentlemen, the scripture says. The intensity of the tribulation will be such that the days will be shortened in order to save many. Today is an opportunity for you. Many will run and hide themselves behind rocks and behind mountains. But the mountains and the rocks will tell them, please, we are also in trouble. And so we cannot help you. This is the day of the Lord. This is an acceptable year. This is the day that you've got to listen to the word of the Lord. And scripture said in the midst of all this, the Antichrist, the false prophets, governments, and people who don't want to have anything to do with this king of glory, will come together and massacre the greatest army to go and take Israel, which is called the Battle of Armageddon in the Bible. But whilst they are going, uh, uh, now my message is sinking in. Whilst they are going, the King of Glory, who is the Redeemer of Israel and humanity, the Bible says he will appear in the skies with all the righteous saints and thousands of thousands of angels. And the whole world will ask, Who is this King? Who is this King? Who is this king? Who is this king? And the angels in heaven will shout, He is the king of glory. He is the mighty God. He is the great I am that I am. And God is the God of us. He is coming to do battle. He is coming to take his kingdom. Now, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, this earth belongs to Jesus. And all those who belong to Jesus. He is coming back for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's coming with glory. What is glory? It is the magnificence, the splendor, the grandeur, the opulence, and majesty and honor given to Christ himself for this enviable achievement on Calvary. 
He is coming again to complete man, to consummate man, and to perfect the full realization of salvation in the totality. Oh, when he shall appear, all things shall be perfect. All things shall be made perfect, and salvation shall be seen. Let me show you how John puts it. He says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. All things were created by him and for him. In him was life. And the life was the light that lighted every man's path into this world. A man was sent. His name is John. He was not the light. Let me jump quickly. The Bible says that he came to his own, but his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, he has given them the power to become the sons of God. Oh my God, my God, my God. The Bible said that he manifested physically and we beheld his glory as the glory of the Father, full of grace, full of truth. Jesus Christ is the glory of the Father. And this glorious king is coming again. Not to read it, the Bible said that it pleased the Father that the fullness of God said might dwell in him. Oh, that is what Christians can say. Christ in us is the hope of our glory. We might I present to the world, I present to the body of Christ that the King of glory is coming. The King of glory is coming. He's coming to turn his soul. He's coming to reign. He's coming to exercise dominion. Tonight, may you receive the blessing of this King of glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. The question is, who is this king of glory? Mm. He is the destroyer of sin and Satan. Today there is so much sin in this, this world. Sin is a big peak. But Christ has dealt with the problem of sin mm. and the problem of Satan. We are afraid of what the enemy can do. But my Bible said that it is for this reason mm. that the Son of Man was manifested to destroy every works of Satan. When Christ shall descend the second time, mm. he will destroy every power of sin and destroy Satan himself. The Bible said that just one angel will bounce Satan and he shall be cast into the bottomless, bottomless pits. So will the Antichrist and the false prophets who also be caught and shall be thrown into the lake of fire. And that is the coming. That day is the coming of the king of glory. There shall be no more sin. There shall be no more sin. The world shall be free. It will be a sinless world. And it is when that king of glory comes. This evening, I preach to you where you are. Maybe you are living in sin. Right now, maybe you are in the very act sin. But if you can hear the voice of the Lord, and repent of your sin. When the King of God comes, you shall be part of those ones who shall go and reign with him. Oh, somebody say amen. amen. He is coming for final redemption. The final redemption of man. The final redemption of all creation. The Bible says creation is a ground for the manifestation of the sons of God. To be loose from bondage. There is pain in this world. There are problems in this world. Look at the confusion we are facing. But when the King of Glory is come, all these problems shall cease. Amen. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. I said, praise God. Hallelujah. He's coming to judge the living and the dead. The Lord is coming to judge the living and the dead. All power has been given to him to judge the living and the dead. Don't you know that it is appointed unto man to die once, and after death there is judgment. It is Jesus, this King of glory, who has been given power and dominion to judge the living and the dead. The Bible said that he came quickly and his reward is in his house to give to every man according to his deed. 
the scripture says he is coming again as king of kings to rule the entire world. Oh, I love this part. Mm. He is the king of glory. He is the one who is coming to sit on the Davidic throne. Isaiah says his name is called Wonderful Counselor, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. His kingdom shall never end. This is the one who is coming. Mm. Are you ready for him? Amen. He will reign forever. Amen. In his kingdom, there shall be no pain. Amen. There shall be no cry. The Bible said that Jesus shall wipe out our tears mm. in that kingdom. Are you ready for him? Amen. Who is this king of glory? He is the Lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. Who is this king of glory? He is the water of life. Amen. Who is this king of glory? Mm. He is the light of the world. Who is this king of glory? He is the Alpha and the Omega. Who is this king of glory? He is the root and the offspring of David, the bright morning star. The Bible says unto them who wait anxiously and patiently for him, the second time he shall appear. Now listen, the scripture says, Now I saw the heavens open, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on him was called faithful, the true and the righteous. He judges and maketh war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe deep in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven clothed him finally, white and clean. Follow him on the horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule with them with the rod of iron. He himself tread the world press of the fearless and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his tie a name that is written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I am here to declare to believers that the King of Glory is coming. When he entered heaven, the heavens declared that all oh, ye everlasting gods be lifted for the king of glory. Come it. And who is this king of glory? The Lord is strong and mighty. When he entered into Hades, the gates of Hades opened and he shouted, Who is this king of glory? The Lord is strong and mighty. But he is coming again unto this earth. And then again, everlasting gods. Gates shall be lifted, and they will shout, Who is this king? And angels shall proclaim him the king of glory. This is the king that I recommend to you. Tonight, the this is that confession. May you receive Jesus into your life. May you receive him into your life. In the name of Jesus. And after this canopy of his glory, I pray, even if you are sick, if you are confused, if you are battling with anything, if something is oppressing you and you don't know what to do, in the name of Jesus, may you receive the miracle, may you receive the breakthrough, may you receive the healing, in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight, I cancel cancer, I cancel epileptics, I cancel every arthritis, every situation in your life that seems insurmountable. In the name of Jesus, the one who died and arose from the dead. May you receive your healing Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. He is the King of Glory. And this King of Glory is coming again. Amen. He died, He rose again. He's coming for you. Amen. He's coming for the church. Amen. Tonight, this thing has got to be settled. I want to end the ministration tonight by inviting you to receive the Lord Jesus into your life. This is an opportunity for you to receive the Lord Jesus. You never know when he's coming. It is possible that right after this message, the Lord can come for you. But if he comes, are you ready? Tonight is a glorious opportunity. I want to invite you to accept the Lord Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Mm. 
Wherever you are, if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, I want you to lift up your hands and repeat this prayer after me. And receive this prayer after me. Pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for saving me. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. But tonight I've heard your word. But tonight I've heard your word. I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. And I give my life to you. And I give my life to you. Write my name in the long book of life. Write my name in the long book. And make me your own. And make me your own. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, tonight may the Lord bless you. May the Lord first is to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord anoint you afresh. And may the Lord make you ready for the second coming of this King of Glory. For I believe that this course is not over until it is all over. God bless you. Amen. Amen.